Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games. We're doing a full review of the Battle of Britain by Richard Borg. This is the latest PSC reprint. Uh, the game really is designed for two players, but it can handle up to four. You can parse out some of your squadrons to different folks. You are simulating that German attack, uh, July 1940, where they're flying in. They're trying to prep England for invasion. Uh, they've got to get across the channel. They've got to dominate the air. Um, the whole shift between early on hitting those uh, radar stations that really kept Britain able to, to put uh, smaller resources into the right spot at the right time, uh, the airfields being attacked, the radar stations being attacked, the, then the shift. Cities were being hit as well, but then the full shift away from those uh, airfields, away from the 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 knocking down of the air squadrons and then shifting more to that city bombing campaign which gives a little bit of breath of life that gives the RAF just a little bit of rest and refit time all simulated here in about hour half two hours and it's got a great toy factor good looking board too let's go ahead and take a look all right the opening shot of Battle of Britain, Richard Borg. This is the newest PSC um, version that's come out. We're going to walk around here. I'll show you. There's going to be little miniature planes, as you can see, that'll be in play. You've got cards that are going to show your actual squadrons and the type of really specific planes that are in that squadron. The uh, plane models are just visual representations. They're just place keepers, the type of plane, although they do show different planes, both German and English. Um, those models just are physical representations. You can see radar installations that are probing out into the sea. Plane models sitting on their respective airfields uh, ready to launch and respond to those radar um, signals that will come across. I know I'm a little tight, but you can see the different groups. For example, you can see the RAF Group 11 and how it's distinguished from Group 10 here. And I'm going to roll up here. You're going to have some more of the German areas where the uh, in France where they are flying out of and across the channel. So in this review, I'm going to walk you through what a basic turn is. But I'm going to tell you before we start a little bit about uh, kind of the nature of the battle and how the turns really are self-evident um, and, and how they make just so much sense and the beautiful nature of how the gameplay is going to work here. So those that don't know, 1940, uh, Germany attacks Britain via the air. Um, the idea is that if they can get air superiority, really the only way they know they can invade the uh, land invasion of Great Britain is if they can secure the air. Um, and they begin that. Uh, the Germans are flying and attacking uh, early on different airfields and radar installations and some cities uh, in their opening attacks. And as the attack drags on, the RAF starts to weaken and it gets harder and harder for them to respond to these attacks. But the Germans are stuck with fuel problems, planes that can't stand up uh, as well as they had hoped against the uh, beautiful British uh, Spitfire and their uh, hurricanes. The, Brit or the Germans are struggling with fuel issues and getting back home after attacks. I believe they even called it the Channel War because they would lose so many planes just trying to get back over the English Channel. So that's what's being modeled here, is the, the difficulty the uh, Brits have, or the British have, in putting up their air defense, and the difficulty that the Germans had in coming over and hitting targets um, and getting back safely so that they can mount yet another mission. So how is this done? Um, the turn order, there'll be a reference guide. I'll show you here. So the reference guide, now I'm going to point out one little thing. Gosh, I wish that had been put on that back page. Just love it. Wasted space. Throw it on the, black, on the back. I don't have to open it up and go through. To, to their point, after you play it for a while, everything's so intuitive. It rolls really well. But there's a few little functional things that I would have to refer to every once in a while. No big deal. So the game system captures the history perfectly. 
as the Germans, you're going to be getting red mission cards that you're going to be assigning to different squadrons. Those missions are going to range from attacking radar installations, attacking uh, uh, airfields that the Brits are flying up out of. And they're going to cover actually attacking cities, resource locations, and uh, the allocation of who's going where, what type of aircraft you're going to have, and a flight, and where that flight is, um, or, or which flight is going to attack which city, because strategically located, sometimes you have real tough decisions on which flight am I going to send on that real long mission. The first thing you're going to do, and this is really going to be more of a general walkthrough, but you're going to have your turn orders tracked here. So the first thing you do, obviously, is switch your turn order out, and then you go into what's called the uh, British Production and Repairs. I'm not going to go into that right now, because if this is turn one, you skip it. I'll cover it at the end, because it's a beautiful tug of war on what the British player has to decide. The German player has these uh, mission cards, red mission cards. He or she draws 10 of them. They're going to be assigning seven of them. You can see one poking out there. Normally it's flipped over. I got them flipped up because I'm going to show you those in a little bit. Um, they will assign those out to the different squadrons and pick their targets. They will be airfields, radar installations, or cities. So as you're playing through, gameplay is actually extremely intuitive if you know anything about the battle. Um, you can already tell we've got an air thing going on here. You've got the Brits defending their homeland and the Germans are going to come in. So the first thing you do is you're moving your turn order track of its first turn. You put it on your first turn deal. Um, the on the very first turn that the Brits are playing, there's a step where they come through and check on their production, which is all tracked here, and some of their planes and squadrons, some things they can do, or airfields that'll damage. Obviously, on the first turn, that ha hasn't happened yet. And I'm actually going to come back and talk about that at the very last step. It is very, very cool part of the game. Um, but we wouldn't be doing it right now, and it makes a lot more sense after you hear how some of the attacks and damage come down. So I'll come back to it. Step three is the German mission assignment. So these red cards, big old stack of them, have particular cities. They're going to tell you that this is our, our targets. So I shouldn't just say cities because there's airfields, there's radar installations, there's cities. This tells you it's an industry, it's a city, that it's a value of two production, and it's going to take three hits. So everything's really nice. What happens is, and I'm going to scroll over here, I'm going to bring this over. Now I've got these, let me zoom in. I've got these flipped over so that you can see them. Normally, you're looking at the backside. So the British player has no idea what flight uh, is going. Uh, uh, targets are going to be, nor the individual squadrons. Here they're flipped over so you can kind of see we've got an airfield. Airfield, they only take one hit. And then there's a, a city or an industry that's going to take three. The assignment of these is, is critical because you have, and let me shift the camera over again, you have flights of German squadrons that have to hit targets all over England. And you've got to pick from a limited amount. Again, you're going to draw two, and there's seven different squadrons that are going to get missions. You've got to assign the missions to the different squadrons, and the further they fly, really, the more not only the more dangerous do they get attacked, the more dangerous they get attacked, not only is it more dangerous due to the length of time they're over enemy territory for them getting attacked, but it's the further they got to go, the more fuel they got to burn. So you want to assign targets that are going to be the most appropriate for the individual squadrons as far as distance, but sometimes you get handed a set of 10 cards, you got to draw and use seven of them, and you just got to make do with what you got. Beautiful aspect, great way to assign missions, great way to keep things historic as well. So moving into a mission alert, I want to just grab this and, and uh, when a squadron moves, they're going to use fuel that allows them to move up to five spots on the map. However, when they hit a radar installation spot, you can see these radars reach out into these channel zones here, they have to pause, and the British player 
um, gets to decide if they want to intercept that flight or not. Now here is a huge key factor in the difference in the game. If they fly up and intercept, there is a battle phase that is precarious, um, almost random. It can swing wildly. Now I'm going to break out again near the end of this explanation and I'll reset the table a little bit and I'll show you the difference between an intercept attack and a dogfight. So I will come back to those in a little bit, but at this phase they get a radar hit. The German squadron has to pause. If the British squadron decides to intercept, it's a lot more dangerous for them. They can lose a lot more planes in a swingy way, but what they do is they then force that German squadron to stay there. So it slows them down. They're basically pounced upon. They're disrupted a little bit. Now, because of the dangerous nature of an intercept, the British player may decide, I'm not going to intercept them, in which case the German player gets to keep on moving. So if you see here, if I can get my finger on, they've started here. If they've spent a fuel marker, they can move five. You can't quite see their squares of movement. You can kind of see them. But one, two, if they're not intercepted, they're able to go three, four, you know, five, and maybe they're able to reach their target on a single container or a single counter of fuel. However, if they're intercepted, now you've stopped them at that location. You've slowed them down. They're burning. They're going to have to burn more fuel on their next round to continue their movement. Again, I will come back to the dangers of an intercept attack uh, in just a little bit. All right, so I've put other counters, the dogfight counters on there and the intercept counters. They're double-sided. Five is all you have. This is awesome. This is beautiful. This is simple. The British can only put up five, I don't know, attacks, flights. I mean, they've got all these plane squadrons, 12 exact, yet they can only pull off five combat type missions. Meanwhile, the Germans have seven flights. There's going to be two of them you're not even going to be able to mess with. Now, kind of skipping off a turn order, as missions go and you hold up certain flights with intercepts, other ones move through, uh, Germans complete certain missions, get back to their airfield, take on yet another mission in a different turn. Now, if the Brits are looking at the overall strategy, they may be able to get it staggered. Not the first turn. The first turn, the Germans are bringing all seven of their flights, and you're only going to meet them with five. But if you start jamming them correctly, you can get the battle. The Brits can get the battle to be a little more manageable. So a good game is about simple, easy to grok, hard decisions to make. This is one of them. Do you send a flight out? that's been hit by radar and intercept, thus slowing down that German flight, but at great peril to yourself? Or do you hold back, wait till the next step, which is British movement, where you can now move on to that flight and instead of an intercept, engage in a dogfight? Again, I'm gonna show the intercept combat and the dogfight combat after I kind of wrap up turn order. And you're gonna see the advantages uh, combat-wise of a dogfight. But right here I'm showing you the advantages of an intercept and in the slowing down of the German attack. All right, I've widened out. So you can see there's all these British planes around circling in the general areas or coming up off their airfields. And currently I just got one German flight coming in. Of course, the other ones would be moving in as well. When you're doing your movements, the Germans will move a unit it's either intercepted or not. They either continue their movement or they don't. Once they've completed that movement, the next German would go. The next, the next, the next. You would move through every German flight that can move. Swirling over to uh, the Brits. The Brits now have the same option. So I can move all of my flights. 
but I can't have more than two. I, I can't have two British flights or planes or these little stands in the same square. So it's not like I can put three units in one and just devastate. No, it's going, this plane represents a whole flight already. So I can move them all around the map and get them placed where I want, or maybe even get them placed for the future. But only one of them is going to be able to get on the same spot as the German flight, which by the way would also bring it to a stop if it flew into a German flight. So maybe I'm guessing it's target or whatnot. But once I'm in that spot, I have the, the, the potential now to engage in a dogfight, the gray counter, rather than the orange one. The Brits can move three. One, two, three. He wouldn't even be able to make it. So let's keep it simple. One and two. They would be engaged. I end up deciding we're going to do a dogfight. I place the counter because I'm not going to do the dogfight now, even in the regular game. I would then move another RAF unit and move another, move another. If there's a dogfight to take place, I would put the marker down because I'm going to resolve said dogfight right before uh, the option if a German player is over their target. Let's just assume they are. When they ended their movement, they're going to put down their uh, bombing marker. So we'd move into step seven, and again, let's just assume this uh, flight of Germans are over their target. The British RAF has put up a squadron to attack them. There will first be a dogfight resolution. Again, I'm going to show you how the dogfight and the intercept uh, combats happen at the end of this uh, turn walkthrough. That would be completed for this unit, and then we would assess their bombing. All of this takes place, both the dogfighting and the bombing with dice. I will show you the bombing phase and how that works with the dice after I show you the intercept and the dogfight combat. They're all very similar, elegantly done with very nice custom dice. Uh, we can assume the dogfight's over and now the RAF unit. So if they're, they get to decide whether or not they're gonna head back to their air base at this point in time. They're not tracking fuel or anything else. The main thing is if they really get mauled in a fight, they need to get back to their airfield so that they can have a chance at refitting airplanes and getting their squadron of three planes filled back out. So if this unit had been mauled, maybe even wiped out, um, you're going to take the plane piece and put it back on the squadron card, which is off map. This will allow them to rest and refit and get back in the action. If they're good, maybe they uh, didn't take any damage at all, you can simply keep them up. It's as if they're on patrol, no problem. Brits aren't ever checking uh, fuel or anything. Then the Germans got to decide if they're going to reach for home. Reaching for home means they're either so low on fuel or they're so damaged or combat ineffective or they've completed their bomb run and they're done. Now all they need to do is get home and they simply uh, go through a process of uh, checking uh, how much fuel they used and rolling the dice. Once home, they simply determine uh, mission success or failure, and then we restart going back up and advancing the turn marker. And then again, I wanted to talk about, so this is me coming back. You've got step two, which is the British production and repairs. And I'm going to move the camera and kind of show you how this works. All right, so we're looking at the German targeting and uh, slash British production card. You can see the different groups are displayed. All the major uh, city targets that are uh, in the area, uh, radar installations as well off to the side. The numbers you're looking at are the numbers that those particular cities, their production points. I've got one bomb marker on here, which would indicate that the city has been bombed and it's taken uh, one damage. That city is going to require uh, three bombs on it in order to wipe it out. The city is bombed and has a damage marker on it, in this case it's London, you cannot use the resource points, hence they're covered, um, in regards to uh, being able to repair things. So, how do the resource points work? The British are going to take their dice, the white dice. Um, if they are, uh, if we're looking at group 11, the group 11 card, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, 
um, has a damaged airplane on it, a damaged squadron. Uh, they basically return to base. But what we're going to do is determine how many dice uh, group 11 is going to be rolling. So in this case, it's just 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They're going to be rolling 9 dice. Now you're only given 6, so it's as simple as rolling, counting your results. That's a uh, terrible result. And in this phase, I'm looking for the British Rondell. I want to get as many as I possibly can. So I've gotten one. Let me throw it up here. I've gotten one good one so far. I roll my other ones, and I didn't get any other rondelles. What this means is I can do one repair action. So that one rondelle can be used to repair aircraft, which I'm going to show you how that works in a second, actual airfields, or radar stations. So I don't have any radar stations that are damaged. If they were, we would have a bomb marker on it. If, uh, let's say, one of these cities was actually uh, completely um, wiped out, we would have a bomb marker on it as well. And then a corresponding radar or a bomb marker would be put on the radar station on the map, so we would know it was out. But I could come in and repair it. Radar stations are easy to repair. Cities, you cannot repair, so the damage starts to accumulate on them. I could also use it, so I could use this one marker to fix a radar station. I could use it to repair an airfield, so there could be an airfield out there that I can't fly from if it's destroyed. Mm -hmm. It'll have one of these explosion markers on it, but airfields are also pretty easy to repair. So I might want to go use that one rondelle to fix an airfield that's been shut down to me. Or, and I'm going to reset over, um, I could fix um, some planes in my um, air group. Let's go look at that card. All right, so nice and simple. First to show you, if one of the airfields had been damaged, it only takes one hit to take out an airfield. That airfield would have a marker on it on the squadron map. So showing the particular squadron even that wouldn't be able to get up and fly. And on the board itself, there would be a marker. So again, with that one rondelle, I could remove that. However, you're going to see a plane, and this is off its stand. And I'm going to show you real quick. These stands and the hole that they fit into are kind of hit and miss as far as how well they hold. Now that's doing pretty good. So 11 group, their B flight has been completely uh, destroyed. There's only three planes in a flight. However, if I wanted to bring back with this rondelle one of the flights, and by the way, since this is here, I'm going to be able to show you how um, they uh, rest and refit anyway and get back combat ready. But with that rondelle, I would be able to pull a, a plane that had been formally damaged in combat, put in the damaged aircraft section, and I would be able to look through. Here's a bunch of hurricanes, and I'm looking for, well, there's a, 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 a Blenheim. I can't say it right, but I don't want any of those. I was hoping there was a Spitfire in there, but there isn't. Spitfires are a little bit tougher in combat, but I would be able to repair this one plane and put it back into my flight group. All right, we're looking at group 11 card. Now, if this was the very first round, what we would have done is these would all be empty. We would simply come in, shuffle the combat ready cards. Remember, assume all of the different flights are empty. They would be shuffled and then randomly you just select three cards and you put them in each flight. So three cards in flight A, three in B, three in C, three in D. And those are your planes that would be in that flight. So here we would have two Hurricanes and a Spitfire. The whole point here is that the Germans don't know how strong a particular flight is. So this could be all Spitfires and it would be extremely tough or you might end up something with a bunch of weaker fighters that just aren't quite as tough as you would hope. But what I want to show you real quick is back to 
the, uh, the refit stage. So this flight has returned home. They were devastated. I've shown you how uh, they were able to use one of the rondelles uh, to fix a damaged aircraft. But since they've gone back to their base, they're going to have an option as they move through um, their future turns. Assume this is it. They get to look and say, okay, we only have one. We did return to base. Again, I'm going to shuffle the deck. And I would do this for any flight that's gone back uh, to their, uh, their base. Their airfield is up and working. And they would randomly get two new airplane cards put into their flight. Again, taking them up to three. The Brits will always only have three. And you would take a look and just see who you got. Now, when we get into combat, I'm going to tell you what all of these numbers and everything mean. Uh, but this is the simple, beautiful mechanism of how you're going to get your flight beefed back up, yet the limitations that are in place by a particular flight having only, and it's not three planes, it's more like three squadrons of planes. All right, the custom dice. You're going to have the six British custom dice, the six black uh, German dice, and they're going to have uh, these three different types of uh, faces on them. You've got the German hit symbol, You've got the British rondelle symbol. Yes, you can hurt yourself. Symbolizes like, a, I don't know, an engine failure or uh, maybe even a training issue. Who knows? You can do your own damage or a blank face. So just to show, you're going to have on, on the British die, you've only got one of your own that you can do damage to. You've got two blank faces, which neutral, do nothing. Then you're going to have three of the... Uh, German hits. Same thing will be in play, so you're going to have, uh, they can do damage to themselves, one of the uh, German hit symbols, three of the rondelles, and then blanks. So when you're rolling off in combat, which I'm going to show you, or if you're trying to get resource points or whatnot, um, it's a lot harder uh, to get your own symbol, which is good if you're in combat, bad if you're trying to get resources to repair things. Let me show you how the playing cards work. All right, so the numbers. So if we go around first is the uh, dogfight dice, so the uh, number of dice that that plane, if it's or that squadron has coming in, uh, would be able to roll. Oh, I wanted to throw out, these are the different plane types, and I pulled in some different squadrons uh, to show them. Um, by far, you, you're not seeing a lot of these. It's primarily... Uh, the uh, Hurricane and the Spitfire. But of course, you got your symbol showing that it's uh, what group it is and that it's uh, RAF. Uh, you've got your damage strength, so how many hits it can take. Uh, there's a little bit of a twist there, whether it's an intercept or a dogfight, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So you can see the Spitfire can take a few more rounds uh, than, uh, than the rest of these planes. All right. And then bombing dice. Bombing dice you're not going to see on these. It'll be right here. And I'm going to pull out some of the German planes and show you uh, them in a second. You'll see there'll be a bombing number here. So the German flight cards are a little different. You're going to see, uh, I didn't show you on the other one, but they've got, dropped one, they've got a bunch of cards in their combat ready group that they'll be able to, to refit as they go in. You can see their current mission. Again, these would be flipped upside down or or uh, symbol side face up so that the British wouldn't know what they were getting ready to attack. Uh, but that way they could look and say, this is where I'm flying to. And this is an ace marker that I'll get into if they're successful in combat. They can pick up an ace marker to give them help in future combats. Instead of three squadrons or uh, three plane cards in an individual flight, uh, the Germans are going to have six. All right, so you can just see one of the fuel markers here. So again, as they're moving, uh, they burn a fuel marker, and then that flight can move five. They have three fuel markers. But I want to show again, so the dogfight uh, number. So you can see we've got a JU-88, uh, Dorner 17, the Hinkle 111, uh, the Junkers 87, dive bomber, the Screamer. you got a, a BF-110, and then a BF-109, but I want to show in another flight, you've even got, see if that's fully in there, it is. You've got a BF-110D, which is slightly weaker on the dogfight. There's not a lot of different variations of planes in here. I believe that's the only one if memory serves, but it was kind of neat just to show some of the differences. So again, we have the number of dice that a uh, plane or a flight 
uh, would add to the die roll, the number of damage it can take, and then its bombing number. So you can see the JU-88s can take uh, absorb some uh, the most damage. They're dropping two, or they're rolling two dice in the bomb roll, two dice, two dice. The Junkers is only rolling one. Uh, the BF-110s aren't bombing at all, and neither are the uh, the uh, BF-109s. You can see they're rolling four dice, three dice, one die, one die, and that BF-109 can take a lot of damage. Let me get into the actual uh, combat, the rolls, and the dangers of the intercept, and uh, the sheer pleasure of both intercept and dogfight battles. All right, we're going to show you how a uh, intercept combat works. So we'll put that down. So not the dogfight, but the intercept. This is assuming that uh, radar has picked up an inbound flight of uh, German planes. The uh, British were within uh, three movements of reaching that uh, box that the, the Germans were picked up in, and they pounced them. So um, what's going to happen is the Brits have a flight of three and they're going to show what they have in their flight so you can see their power and the Germans have a flight of six. They can, uh, they're going to fan these out and the British player is actually going to just randomly select three. So I'm going to just pick three out of here, see if I can get three to come off. So these ones aren't involved. Let me put them over here. And they're going to flip over theirs. And so they did pretty good. They actually got one of their fighters in, which is great. This is where it gets a little chaotic, because you can see um, in the blind draw, the Germans are, are don't have the ability to necessarily get their fighters in, and you're going to see that in the regular dogfight, how it's a little bit more strategic. This is a lot more random, chaotic, and can be devastating for either side. So why is an intercept so much more dangerous? Well, I'm going to walk through and I'm going to show you how they take their losses, and that's the main difference. But first, uh, let's add these up. So you got four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only six die here, but we'll get to roll two more of those in a second. Four, five, six. They've got all theirs that they would roll. So the Brits come in, they roll, and you can see they've done one damage to themselves. I like to roll these over to the middle. Uh, they've got lovely, lovely four hits here. I'm going to re-roll this one again. Remember, they've got uh, eight that they can roll. All right, another hit. Just remember, we've got that one and a miss. So there we go. We can just roll this over here. You can see... They have five hits, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But let's see what the what the Germans were able to do. Holy moly, that's pretty good. But they've done some damage to themselves as well. Remember, they could only roll six die. I don't know if I had all that rolling on camera. I'm, I apologize. And we're going to flip-flop these. I like to just throw these over here so you can see what's going on. Let me make sure that's all on camera. So now we're looking at the damage they can take. So first, let's assign, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six damage. All right, so we're gonna do four, and this one would be, so this 109 would be destroyed, and then five, six. This plane uh, was not hit. The, uh, the Germans can just factor in uh, that uh, this one's made it out of that intercept phase. And remember, they still got three other, three other uh, planes in their flight. Now we've got five hits coming in here. So, and this is where I'm gonna be able to show you where the intercept phase can be so, so dangerous and deadly. I get to choose who I wanna take um, the most hits. So I have the choice where I could make it nice and even where we've got three hits here, four, five, and I leave my Spitfire, lone Spitfire in the fight. Quite honestly, that's probably the way I would do that. But to kind of show you how um, the makeup of the planes you have can be a problem is, let's say um, I wanted to take the four hits. I would not do this. So I take the four hits on the Spitfire. There's only one more hit to assign, but in an intercept phase, if a squadron has a single damage to it, it's wiped out. All right, so it would definitely, I would want to do where these would be gone, absorbing all five hits. 
leave this squadron intact because if I had the Spitfire take four, I still have one left, which is an overkill, and it's just not the smart move to make. Um, but you can see sometimes this works terribly against you. I've had it where, where I've got um, three Spitfires and there's five hits. Well, one Spitfire is gone, and then the single lone hit drops a whole nother Spitfire card. And that's where the danger of the intercept comes in on both sides. Both sides. So it's that random draw for the Germans. They don't know what's going to get nailed. It could be three of their bombers and they're wiped out like that. Or you've got this danger to your flights where just one single tick mark will destroy them. Dangers of an intercept. All right, I've got all the cards pulled for a dogfight. So the British squadron, normally they're not laid out like this. These are hidden. The British squadron, this would be their hand of cards. They would select one. Let's just pretend they're going to select the Spitfire to go out and be their first one. So the German player doesn't know what I selected. Uh, the German player is going to select one of theirs as well. Um, and they're going to pick, let's just say, this BF-110. You're going to come in and determine how many dogfight dice are going to be rolled. So the British Spitfire is going to be rolling four. The BF-110 is only rolling three. So you're saying, well, there's a problem already because in order to beat or shoot down the Spitfire, you're going to have to roll four. You can't even do it. However, remember, it's possible, and I've done it, that you could roll, I could roll rondelles on myself and, and get them to the point where they've shot down my plane. Uh, the British player, I keep saying that, I've played the British player a lot. Um, the um, German plane only has a hit of two. So if I were to roll these off, so holy moly, are you kidding me? Did you see what I just said? This is, there's only one of these, and I just rolled them all. This is like a critical, <laughs> critical failure. Holy moly. All right. German player rolls and gets this. All right, so the key is the squadrons that's received the most hits. It's not just black dice, white dice, because you can see clearly the Spitfire squadrons receive the most hits. All right, no damage will now come to, even if uh, the British player could have gotten the two hits necessary to shoot down the, the German plane, it's the squadron, uh, when it's a dogfight, the one that takes the most hits that's in danger. The, the German player is now safe, even if more hits had been done against them, which they weren't. So all we're focused on now is the spit. And how many hits did it take? Five. Unbelievable. This is like a critical failure. And the Spitfire, you only needed four in order to shoot it down. It is shot down. The Spitfire, if I can pick it up, gets picked up and it gets removed to um, Squadron 11's down over here, their damaged aircraft box. There it can be brought back, uh, as you've seen, as I've explained. This flight did great. He's going to be able to stay, and now I, or the Ger or the British player, gets to select, again, the German doesn't know what I have, another plane to come in and try to uh, handle this, uh, this really good BF-110, apparently. Let's pick the Hurricane. So, they can only do this twice, so this plane can only do this twice. However, if it wins another combat, its squadron's going to get an ace marker. So we're going to go through this one more time, maybe even a few times, because again, we got three combat dice. Uh, the Hurricane only has three combat dice to roll. Hopefully we don't roll. There are other sides here. All right, we're going to roll the Hurricane here. Well, he did one to himself, got one miss. And we'll roll off the BF-110. My goodness. Okay, wow. Not that he needed this. So right off again, we don't worry about it. It's whoever got the most hits. The German player clearly could have shot down another spit. Got the most hits. Uh, we don't worry about the damage to the German flight at all. We only needed three in order to take uh, this guy out. He would go back to his... Damaged aircraft box. This is unbelievable. This, does, this is where the combat, I'm telling you, is thrilling here. Now, 
this BF-110 can't fight again. It's going to retire back to its squadron box, but I'm going to grab, and where is it? I don't see one. Oh, it's way over on the other side. Let me grab it. Hold on. So here is an ace marker. The Brits have their ace markers as well. Two combats were won by that plane. It was retired. You can actually see one right there. I did not see it. I had one ready. All right. That would be placed on top of this squadron's deck for future uh, combats they're going to be in. But let me show you how this would work. So this is the point where the Germans didn't lose the combat. They won, but they won two in a row. So they don't have a plane in the fight here. Nobody has any planes in the fight, so that we would both select one. The Brits only have one more they can bring in. Interesting. And they did so well. Um, let's just bring in the other fighter. Now, to cover a couple outcomes, I won't roll through this again. Um, again, you would be rolling four, and the British player is only rolling one, unless the German player roll, were to roll a bunch of their self-hits. Obviously, the BF-109 wouldn't be in too much danger. Uh, you could also get uh, ties where, uh, let's say, um, it had been as something as simple as, uh, let's show a couple blanks, all right, where, heck, we could even show a blank here. Um, you can see the number of hits would be one for one, and that's a tie, in which case, neither plane was shot down. They didn't even get to the numbers that they needed to get. Um, but even if it had been a tie, like so, all right, that would be enough to shoot down this British plane, but it's a tie. And since uh, you need one uh, clear set of dice that's, that's ahead of the other, no damage to either, they would both retire back to their squadron boards. All right, so you've seen the intercept phase and the dogfight combat. Bombing combat, very similar. However, we're looking now for the number that's in the bombing run area. The fighter has none. You can see we have two, one, two, and two with a caveat on the Stuka. If the target is an airfield or a radar station, they're going to get a bonus die. It's that precision Stuka bombing. If it's a city or an industry location, uh, then they don't. Uh, but, um, Let's just add these up. Let's say it's a city. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to have to roll one more die after we're done here. We're looking for rondelles, and we've got a bunch, which is key. So here's a German marker, and we're going to roll one more time. The rest were blanks, by the way. We'll roll one more time, and yep, they sure enough got that hit. All right, now it's key. So, had we been rolling against an airfield or a radar station, you only need one hit to have a successful bomb run. Against the city, you can have one, two, three will actually uh, achieve that mission requirement. Let me show you a card real quick. All right, so you can see, let me pull up one of these. So you can see you only need one hit here. Here you need three. Now, oftentimes, that's a heck of a roll um, to, to uh, come in and get, but you've got all of them flying. A lot of times they've taken some damage as they go. If you had only gotten, let's say, one hit on this city, and I'm going to come back to that German marker. In order to track the hits on the, uh, the city, which I've already shown, if you would add just one hit, or if you'd had two, and that goes on that uh, production counter and damages whatever city that it hits. Uh, but that would be a successful mission uh, run for that particular squadron, no doubt. After the bomb run's been completed, uh, the anti-aircraft fire gets assessed. So for every German cross rolled, the British player is going to roll uh, an equivalent dice. So two German crosses, two dice. Now that's important because in order to get an anti-aircraft fire hit against the uh, Germans, the British need to get two German symbols. So this would mean nothing's happened, uh, no hit. If the British player had gotten two hits, the German player gets to select which one of the planes uh, was shot down. And it must be a bomber. They could not come in and factor in one of their fighters. So it would be one of the bombers that was hit and shot down. And one last thing I haven't shown as I rotate over, the German 
squadrons or the different planes or flights that are shot down actually get placed in this shot down area. Um, they've got a lot more planes available to them, uh, but they're not coming back like how the British can fix their planes back up when they're damaged. Um, you know, a lot of times British uh, planes historically would get uh, shot down. They would come in belly land and especially the uh, hurricanes could be fixed up really quickly and put right back into the fight. All right, we are back. First, I want to just cover just a couple negatives and they're not big. The um, plane, the physical little plane counters. Now again, there's all different types and I like it. The little physical planes do not actually represent that exact plane. It's just, hey, Spitfire, Hurricane, F or Hinkle F-111, Hinkle 111, uh, BF-109. But my, well, first of all, I didn't get the first edition of this where apparently the plastics from PSC weren't that good. I just had a lot of gamers that had bought it that reached out to me and said, hey, were they fixed? So I did a little research. Yeah, they look great. They work great. They look good. Um, the only issue I had with them is some of them didn't fit in their stands and you would be moving them and not even touching the plane and they're falling off and it got a little fiddly, but a little bit of what, uh, what I have is called sticky tack and just a small little bit in a little hole where the stand fits, boom, held onto them just fine. Um, the other thing I'll tell you is these old eyes looking at the little, uh, triangle counter piece of the... Uh, stand that tells you I could see the color no problem so the color is going to tell you the squadron whether it's the German or the British squadron it's going to tell you which one it is but then you got to see is it A B C occasionally D and man I'd be like dang what is it and I'd have to pick it up bring it up and I'm knocking the plane off <laughs> so that's it uh, maybe some of the uh, the card stock on your little squadrons is a little thin but you're not picking them up moving them around they're just sitting there work just fine great so, that's it on negatives. I love this game. This game I wanted to keep on the table longer and just leave a game in progress, play a little bit with my son, come back, uh, you know, when he, uh, the next week if necessary. We get a little busy around the house with all the activities and vacations, leave it set up, just play it. You can pop right back in. The action really rolls. So, um, you know, and everything is what it should be. When I literally sat down to play it, I'm, I was like, okay, in my, I haven't played this. I even have the original version, never had a shrink, as some of you saw in my little uh, unboxing. But as I sat down, and I like to do this with mini games, before I even read the rules, I put out the pieces and I go, I know enough history on this that it should work like so. Germans are coming in and attacking. We've got specific mission plans. The Brits are trying to stop them. It's a war of attrition. Who can hold on? And, I, and so as I break out the rule book, I'm like, oh, yes. Yes. The limit of only the five intercept or dogfight markers. Exquisite. And I do mean that. As soon as I got into it, I was like, yes, this is how... Uh, Mr. Borg has modified or, or modeled, not modified, modeled the um, not having enough resources. And in that small little five counter trick, if as the rounds or as the, yeah, the full turns or rounds go on, I can try to manipulate that, that the Germans can't bring all seven flights in at the same time. So if there's one stuck or flying far or whatever, and he, or he got held up by a radar installation, and this other group's coming in, I can manage my smaller resources and my five interceptor dogfights to my advantage. The slowing down of the alerting with the radars and the intercept coming in and the, the wild swingy nature of the intercept combat. Yes, because I know, okay, I, I might get lucky in this and, and if I'm the British player and really put a licking on those Germans, great. Or I've wiped out an entire squadron. You know what, early on, fine, I've got extras. I can't bring them all into the battle anyway. 
So let's give it a shot because at the very least, I'm slowing that German uh, flight down where maybe they've got to use so much fuel that they're going to have attrition as they try to get back. By the way, I think I forgot to show that in the close-up, and I went way long on my close-up anyway. I was going to try to be tighter on it, but I really wanted to show stuff. When they turn for home, they've got to look at how much fuel. Is it a bomber? Is it a fighter? There's a roll of the die. Do they make it or do they not? It's as simple as that. But those choices that are handled with five different counters, and the idea of, you know what, I'm not going to run an intercept. Um, I think I've got a couple squadrons that are really loaded with spits. I can get in there. They're in range. They're going to be able to jam that unit. Um, and I'm not going to do the intercept. Uh, and that give and take that happens by letting them continue their movement at that radar installation hit. Not to mention the then further actions of um, an airfield's down or a radar station's down. And now I've rolled and I've got some repair, but do I want to repair planes to get back into squadrons? Do I need to fix an airfield to just bring squadrons back up? Yes, yes I do. Or do I want to go fix that radar installation to keep slowing these guys down so there's not a free pass as they come through? Choices, lots and lots of choices that are not overly difficult to make. They're layered. But you've got like, okay, and then you can adjust on the fly as the game progresses. Love it. Uh, and the simple, simple nature of, of uh, the randomness of the intercept that's in there and the, the soaking up of damage and not being able to, you know, just one single hit on a plane squadron uh, if it bleeds over. You know, a hurricane takes three. And I've got another hurricane, and, I, and they only got four hits, but I've lost both of those. Ugh. All right. So the dog fighting, the intercepting, love it. Really brings in the theme and the feel all at the same time. Not enough resources. What do I attack? Where do I go? Where do I think he's bombing? How does that work in on my production, which is maybe going to allow me to fix stuff? Then the German player, is he, um, you know, he's got a little bit, or she, there's the 10 cards that are being laid in, the 10 mission cards. So you're allowed, <clears throat> there's that randomness of the missions drawn, but then, okay, I really want to focus on these airfields or hit these radar installations and, and maybe, maybe not the uh, industry earlier. You know what? I've got a bunch of industry or I really want to hit the industry harder. I think I can get them really quick and hurt the ability to to, uh, well, not only get my victory locations, victory points, win my missions, but I can, I can do so much damage early on that they're not going to be able to fix their stuff later. Or do you hit all those squadrons and those airfields and those radars as much as you can? I like to. I really want to ground those RAF units and keep them out of the air altogether. But again, you're going to have to really go at it way more because they only got five that they can attack with anyway. So you're, you're trying to maneuver the, the British units even out of position in the future that if they don't go back to base, then they're not at their airfield and maybe you can suck them out of position to a spot and now you're coming in and they can't even reach you to do damage in the first place, even if you get hit by the uh, intercept. There's the beauty. <clears throat> not to mention the toy factor. I mentioned this uh, in, the, uh, in the intro. Uh, my son, who's 12, loved it. It calls to you on the table. You see the flights of planes and you just kind of wander over to it if you have any interest at all in World War II or aircraft. Case in point, my four-year-old grandson, he's over. We play much simpler kind of kid games. He, his eye level, however, is right at the table. And he's like, Grandpa, planes. And I'm like... Yeah, yeah. Throwing in a couple photos of him now. You're seeing him. Uh, this is after I let him do the dice rolling when we were doing intercepts and dogfights. And the planes are out there on the table. And I'm letting him draw some of the cards and pick the ones that are going to fight. And then he's picturing these planes dogfighting and he's flying them at each other and, and role playing what the dice just did. Now, he's not playing the full game, uh, 
but I had a ball with him. Uh, he's just, you know, I have his little hands rolling uh, the, 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 he was rolling German dice, if I remember. And he had a ball. And I had a ball with him. And so the, the eye candy toy factor is great, coupled in with historically correctly themed, the whole feeling of it feels like the Battle of Britain. And there's not too much counter movement record keeping. There's a little bit of fiddliness with the intercept, not intercept, dog fight, put the bomb run down there. It's the intercept instead of the dog fight, but nothing really. Uh, and you got to have them on there so you know kind of where I'm at with that flight of Germans. What about this one? Who's in range of this? Oh, they're running their bomb run. I got to do that one and that one and that one that have bomb run markers out. So not overloaded. It takes a lot of table space. I have a, a gaming table I like to use, and you'll usually see that black table in most of my filming. I had to move to a whole other table that I use usually for for like uh, bigger group games, Euro games. Um, so that was neat that it took so much space. Uh, uh, the the picture where I have the grandson playing, I, I managed to kind of cobble it in to my table I prefer to game at most anyway because nobody else is usually on that table. But for the filming you saw, I shot it on the, the darker brown table. Fun, fun, fun. If you don't own this and you like World War II at all, if you like air combat games, I'm telling you, this is a must buy. I love it. Um, Battle of Britain, Richard Borg, great, great reprint. I wish now I'd had my old one out of the shrink and been playing it. Wow. Way to go, PSC. Uh, I can't say enough. Awesome, awesome reprint. Beautiful two-player game. This is one of my favorites, and it hits that. I'm in this light wargaming spot, sweet spot, I call it. I want to be able to get into something quick, easy, hard decisions, easy play. Not a ton of rule book referencing. This is it. Chief, Bonnie Woodford.